Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is true and directly related to our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel by hitting the button down below. We hope you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. The Law of God versus the Law of Moses may sound like a silly title, but there are some who believe that there is actually a difference between the two. To clarify the stance, there are some who believe that only what is known as the Ten Commandments are to be considered the Law of God. The same also suggests that all other commandments given through Moses are considered only the Law of Moses. They subscribe to the idea that there is a difference between the Law of Moses and the Law of God. But is this really true? Proponents of this doctrine like to claim that God Himself wrote the Law of God, which is what we know as the Ten Commandments. They say these are binding upon believers today, while the Law of Moses was given only for a certain nation, Israel, in a specific time period before the Messiah. It is our prayer that this teaching serves to clarify and demonstrate that the Law of God and the Law of Moses are both one and the same. Let's begin by looking at a couple of examples of when the phrase Law of Moses appears in Scripture. Joshua chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Just as Moses, the servant of Yahweh, had commanded the people of Israel, as it is written in the book of the Law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones upon which no man has wielded an iron tool, and they offered on it burnt offerings to Yahweh, and sacrificed peace offerings. And there, in the presence of the people of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the Law of Moses, which he had written. And back in chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. There are many more examples of the law of Moses, but let's contrast the verses we just read with those concerning the law of God. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8. They read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 31. But Jehu was not careful to walk in the law of Yahweh, the God of Israel, with all his heart. He did not turn from the sins of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin. So are these really two different laws being referred to, or are they one and the same? Did the law that came through Moses actually originate with Moses? Was the law of Moses never intended to be the law of God? Consider Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14. And Yahweh commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and rules that you might do them in the land that you were going over to possess. So did these commandments originate from Moses or from Yahweh? Here's another verse. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25, And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before Yahweh our God as He has commanded us. Some might suggest that these were commanded by Moses only for Israel and only at that time. But the question is, who actually commanded them? Yahweh did. And if we are careful to do all this commandment as He has commanded us, Deuteronomy 6.25. Thus, these commandments do not originate from Moses, but rather from Yahweh. Moses was simply the messenger. Moses delivered Yahweh's commandments. But still, who were these commandments actually for? Israel alone? Were non-Israelites to have a separate law? No. 
Numbers chapter 15, verses 15 and 16. For the assembly there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you, a statute forever throughout your generations. You and the sojourner shall be alike before Yahweh. One law and one rule shall be for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. So not only was the law through Moses intended for all in the faith, Deuteronomy 6 clearly shows that it was Yahweh who gave the law through Moses. Meaning this, the law of Moses is simply the law of God as delivered by Moses. Check this out just a couple chapters later. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Take care lest you forget Yahweh your God by not keeping His commandments and His rules and His statutes, which I command you today. What about Numbers chapter 29? The whole chapter is about the fall holy days, and then we read something interesting in the very last verse. Numbers chapter 29, verse 40. So Moses told the people of Israel everything just as Yahweh had commanded Moses. Again, who commanded them? Moses or Yahweh? It was Yahweh. So the holy days are actually commanded by God and not Moses. The examples given in Ezra and Nehemiah further exemplify this fact. Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. This Ezra went up from Babylonia. He was a scribe skilled in the law of Moses that Yahweh, the God of Israel, had given. And the king granted him all that he asked, for the hand of Yahweh his God was on him. We are told quite clearly that the origins of the law of Moses, Yahweh, God of Israel, gave it to him. If we still have any doubt, a few verses later we read this, Ezra chapter 7, verses 9 through 10. For on the first day of the first month he began to go up from Babylonia, and on the first day of the fifth month he came to Jerusalem. For the good hand of his God was on him, for Ezra had set his heart to study the law of Yahweh, and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. Here, Ezra, the well-learned scribe, is using these terms interchangeably. Consider the words in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. And all the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses that Yahweh had commanded Israel. Again, it is very clear here that it was Yahweh who gave us the Law of Moses. The title Law of Moses simply means the Law of God as delivered by Moses. It is still the one and only Law of God. Continuing several verses later, we read the following, Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 8 and 9. They read from the book from the Law of God clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to Yahweh your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Verse 1 called it the law of Moses, while here in verse 8 it is referred to as the law of God. Let's continue reading. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 14. And they found it written in the law that Yahweh had commanded by Moses that the people of Israel should dwell in booze during the feast of the seventh month. Continuing with verse 17. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 17 through 18. And all the assembly of those who returned from the captivity made booths and lived in the booths. For from the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, to that day the people of Israel had not done so. And there was very great rejoicing. And day by day, from the first day to the last day, he read from the book of the law of God. They kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day there was a solemn assembly, according to the rule. So here in verse 14, we see the mention of law commanded by Moses. And then in verse 18, the same is referred to as the law of God. Just in case one had any doubt, we clearly see here that the law of God includes the Feast of Sukkot as detailed in Leviticus chapter 23 
and as mentioned earlier in Numbers 29. Why is this important? Because remember, some suggest that the law of God is simply the Ten Commandments. Nowhere in the Ten Commandments do we see the Feast of Sukkot mentioned. The law of God includes all the commandments of God as found in the Torah, which should even seem logical on the surface regardless of all the scriptural evidence we are presenting. So why is the law of God also called the law of Moses? The answer is simple. Moses was the chosen vessel for Yahweh to bring forth his instructions. They were not actually the commandments or law of Moses. He was simply the messenger. So now that we've established the terms that the law of Moses and the law of God are truly used interchangeably, let's look at some common objections. Some might say the Ten Commandments were spoken and written by God Himself and therefore indicates its eternal binding nature, while the law of Moses was written by Moses, which indicates its temporal nature. There are many things wrong with this premise. Let's first consider the account of the Ten Commandments. In Exodus chapter 20, we see the giving of the Ten Commandments by Yahweh Himself. Consider verses 18 and 19 of this chapter. Exodus chapter 20, verses 18 through 19. Now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. And they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, lest we die. They were scared to hear Yahweh speak anymore. They didn't want to hear from Him anymore. They feared His voice too much. Now, let's look at the parallel account in Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the rules that I speak in your hearing today, and you shall learn them and be careful to do them. Yahweh our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. Not with our fathers did Yahweh make this covenant, but with us, who are all of us here alive today. Yahweh spoke with you face to face at the mountain out of the midst of the fire while I stood between Yahweh and you at that time to declare to you the word of Yahweh. For you were afraid because of the fire, and you did not go up into the mountain, he said. From verses 6 to 21, we see the Ten Commandments given. Now, let's pick up at verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22. These words Yahweh spoke to all your assembly at the mountain, out of the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. Some stop here and say, see, he added nothing more to them. Yet we need to complete the rest of the chapter for it to make sense with the rest of Scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 23 through 26. And as soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you came near me all the heads of your tribes and all your elders. And you said, Behold, Yahweh our God has shown us His glory and greatness, and we have heard His voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of Yahweh our God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have, and has still lived? Now, pay close attention to what the following verse says, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 27 through 33. Go near and hear all that Yahweh our God will say, and speak to us all that Yahweh our God will speak to you, and we will hear and do it. And Yahweh heard your words when you spoke to me, and Yahweh said to me, I have heard the words of this people which they have spoken to you. They are right in all they have spoken. Oh, that they have such a heart as this always, to fear me and to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and with their descendants forever. Go and say to them, Return to your tents. 
But you stand here by me, and I will tell you the whole commandment and the statutes and the rules that you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land that I am giving them to possess. You shall be careful, therefore, to do as Yahweh your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways that Yahweh your God has commanded you, that you may live, and that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land that you shall possess. Consider again verse 32, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 32. You shall be careful, therefore, to do as Yahweh your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. So what was it that Yahweh commanded them? For that answer, let's review verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 27. Go near and hear all that Yahweh our God will say, and speak to us all that Yahweh our God will speak to you, and we will hear and do it. And verse 31, But you stand here by me, and I will tell you the whole commandment and the statutes and the rules that you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land that I am giving them to possess. We must remember that the prophets all received what to say directly from Yahweh. Very seldom did God Himself speak to His people directly. Does this lessen the validity of the prophets in any way? Of course it does not. In fact, the entirety of the Scriptures was written in the same fashion of the Mosaic Law. Men were told by Yahweh what to write. This is precisely what we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. This would include the Law of Moses. Another objection commonly used is, because the Law of Moses was kept by the side of the Ark of the Covenant and the Ten Commandments inside, this shows a separation between them and the superiority of one over the other. This is referring to Deuteronomy, where we read the following. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 26. Take this book of the law and put it by the side of the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh your God, that it may be there for a witness against you. Compare this to chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. And he wrote on the tablets in the same writing as before the Ten Commandments that Yahweh had spoken to you on the mountain out of the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly. And Yahweh gave them to me. Then I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark that I had made. And there they are, as Yahweh commanded me. So obviously there were indeed two separate places one inside the ark, and the other at the side of the ark. So is this to show the eternal nature of the Ten Commandments and the temporary nature of the rest? Well, we don't think so. What did Yeshua declare the two most important commandments were? Compare this. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Okay, the two greatest commandments are to love God and to love your neighbor. These are declared as the two greatest commandments. Where are these commands found? Not in the Ten Commandments we saw in Exodus, no. We find them with the rest of the commandments of the Torah in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, And you shall love Yahweh your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, You shall not take vengeance or bear grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. 
Neither of these two commands are stated directly in any of the Ten Commandments. They are given later through Moses. Also, what did Christ do when tempted? He quoted from the law. That's how He overcame temptation. He did not, however, quote any of the Ten Commandments at this time. So, according to those who separate them, He quoted from Moses to overcome sin and not God. And He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. This proves that Yeshua technically considered these quotations to be words from Yahweh, not Moses. Yet some still say that what Moses wrote was done away with while the Ten Commandments remain. If the Ten Commandments are to be the greater or lasting commandments, how is it that the ones noted as the greatest two are not mentioned in the commandments that are placed in the ark? How is it that the ones quoted by Yeshua to overcome sin are not included either? What about Paul's command to the church at Corinth? These people were of Gentile background. Consider his words, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. What example are we to follow? Is it the example of following Moses? Again, the two greatest commandments are not mentioned in the first ten, what some call the law of God. However, how many tablets were there that Moses had? There were two, two tablets of stone. Yeshua mentions the two greatest commands. Are you seeing it yet? Let's look at what is commonly called and accepted as the Ten Commandments. If you notice, the first four deal directly with our relationship to Yahweh. The last six deal specifically with our relationship to our neighbor. Could it not be that these were even divided on the two tablets of stone? One stone dealing with our relationship with Yahweh and the other stone with our relationship to one another? In other words, this pattern reveals how we are to understand every commandment found in the Torah. There are two sections in the book. The first section concerns our relationship with Yahweh. The second section concerns our relationship to one another. We know that all of the Law and the Prophets hang on these two commandments. That being said, the rest of the Law, all of it, falls into either loving God or loving others. What this means is that every commandment in the Torah details specifically how to love God and how to love others. Let's tackle another topic as it relates to the Ten Commandments. Some also say that the Ten Commandments should not be referred to as the Ten Commandments, but rather the Ten Words or the Ten Sayings. They have a legitimate point as the words in the Hebrew for the Ten Commandments are actually Aserat Ha Davarim. In Hebrew, this literally means the Ten Words or the Ten Sayings. They could also be translated as the Ten Statements or even the Ten Declarations. Aserat Hadavarim is found in the following verses. Exodus chapter 34, verse 28. So he was there with Yahweh forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13. And he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, that is, the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 4. And he wrote on the tablets in the same writings as before the Ten Commandments that Yahweh had spoken to you on the mountain out of the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly. And Yahweh gave them to me. Thus, the Ten Words, or the Ten Sayings, would be the literal interpretation. If it was meant for them to be literally the Ten Commandments, it would not say Aseret Ha Davarim, but rather Aseret Ha Mitzvot, which literally means the Ten Commandments. However, as noted, the Hebrew says Haseret Davarim. We see Mitzvot properly used as commands or commandments in other verses like these. Genesis chapter 26, verse 5. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. 
Exodus chapter 16, verse 28. And Yahweh said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14. But if you will not listen to me and will not do all these commandments. Mitzvot is the word used for commands or commandments. Therefore, the mention of a literal ten words might be the categories of the entirety of the Torah. So we could also refer to them as the ten sayings or the ten principles. However, we should also consider the scripture referring to the stone tablets and what is on them. Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. Yahweh said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone, with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. The Hebrew word for the commandment here is ha mitzvot. Even though these are noted as the ten sayings or principles, there is still reason to consider them as commands just the same. But why would these ten commandments or sayings on the two tablets of stone be placed inside the ark while the Torah was commanded to be placed by the side of the ark? The Ark of the Covenant was kept in the Holy of Holies. We know that everything in the tabernacle was a pattern shown to Moses of heavenly things as it is recorded. Exodus chapter 25, verse 9. Exactly as I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and all of its furniture, so you shall make it. This is also confirmed in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. They serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, See that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. Therefore, we can conclude that everything has a very special meaning in the tabernacle and later the temple. So what is the intended meaning of the ark residing in the Holy of Holies? It is believed by some that the inside of the Ark of Covenant represents the heart of the inner man. We know that Yahweh has always wanted the law to be written on our hearts, as evidenced by the following scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14. But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahweh. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And also... Psalm 119, verses 10 through 11. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So, the law has always been meant to be written on our hearts. And so, this is exactly why some believe that the Ark of Covenant represents the heart of God. Circumcision begins in the heart. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And Yahweh your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. Obedience also starts in the heart. The Ten Commandments on the two stone tablets in the ark could very easily represent the Torah written upon the tablets of our hearts. Just as circumcision of the heart leads to circumcision of the flesh, having the Ten Commandments in our heart leads to obedience of the Torah outwardly. That is why the Torah is on the outside of the ark. This ties in wonderfully with what Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14 says. But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. Paul also refers to this verse in Romans, but brings clarification. Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 8. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or 
who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Please see our teaching titled, The Prayer of Salvation, for more detail on this verse. So it is Yeshua, the Word that is in our hearts, which leads the inner man to obedience to the whole Word of Yahweh in the physical, the root that produces the fruit. Think of it this way. If you want an apple tree, do you plant an apple tree? No. You plant an apple seed, something that contains all the basic information to produce the apple tree. It's a minute fraction of the size, yet contains everything needed to produce the expected fruit. Likewise, we see in the ark, the seed, the basic summary of everything needed to produce the expected fruit. Consider an interesting similarity here. Most all seeds contain three basic elements. The seed coat, or what others may call the shell, the embryo, and the endosperm. That is the basic makeup of all seeds. Do you see the similarity? The seed coat is as the stone tablets. The embryo and the endosperm are as the commands to love God and love man. Consider also the two groups of commands are carved into the stone tablets on both sides. Exodus chapter 32 verse 15. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets that were written on both sides, on the front and on the back they were written. So they are in the seed coat, if you will. When we apply this seed to our heart, it truly becomes our daily bread, as Yeshua also quoted Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So it is actually the manna that sustains us and truly produces life from that which is dead. That could possibly be the reason why we also see the jar of manna and Aaron's budding staff also in the ark. Consider Hebrews chapter 9, verses 3 through 4. Behind the second curtain was a second section called the Most Holy Place having the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden urn holding the manna, and Aaron's staff that budded and the tablets of the covenant. Therefore, just like when we plant an apple seed, we get an apple tree. Likewise, plant the Word and get the Word. When we plant the seed of the Word in our hearts, the Word comes alive in our lives, all of it. Please see our teaching titled, Narrow-Minded, for more on this. We see that the Law of God and the Law of Moses are actually one in the same. When discussing the Law of God, it has been questioned if it was indeed given by God or angels. This is often brought up after someone reads Acts chapter 7 or Galatians chapter 3. Consider this. Acts chapter 7 verses 52 and 53. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You have received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Galatians chapter 3, verse 19. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. So at a quick glance, it can appear that there is a contradiction as to the source of the law or the Torah. However, there is really not an issue at all. The Torah was indeed given by Yahweh. The scriptures are rather clear to this fact, as we have cited multiple verses. Consider the example, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22. These words of Yahweh spoke to all your assembly at the mountain out of the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. Again, it's pretty clear that Yahweh himself gave his Torah. However, many will say, wait a minute, 
What about Acts chapter 7 and Galatians chapter 3? Look here at Acts chapter 7, verse 53. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. First, notice that it says they received the law, and then it says that it was put into effect through angels, which is just another word for messengers. First, they received it from Yahweh, and then the messengers, those who delivered the law, put it into effect. It's actually a reference to verse 52. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. The messengers are those they killed in their rejection of Torah. The same principle is found in Galatians chapter 3. It clearly says, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Some translations say put into effect or put into place. The meaning is the same. Put into effect or put in place through angels, messengers, by a mediator. The mediator was Moses. Don't forget Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 23 through 26. And as soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and you said, Behold, Yahweh our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of Yahweh our God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of fire as we have and has still lived? Again, pay close attention to the following verses. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 27 through 28. Go near and hear all that Yahweh our God will say, and speak to us all that Yahweh our God will speak to you, and we will hear and do it. And Yahweh heard your words when you spoke to me, and Yahweh said to me, I have heard the words of this people which they have spoken to you. They are right in all that they have spoken. Moses was the intermediator mentioned here in Galatians chapter 3. The messengers angels are simply those who deliver the law to all the people, the prophets. Finally, we believe it is clear that what is often referred to as the law of Moses is indeed the law of God and is without doubt given by Yahweh himself. That being said, may we remember the words of Paul to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. In summary, there is no difference between the law of God and the law of Moses. Moses did not provide an additional law distinguished from the law of God. The commandments that Moses wrote are also often called the Word of God and the Law of God. All Moses did is write down the law of God as he was told to do. That way, the law could be easily disseminated to Israel, and Israel could then serve as the light to the nations, instructing the whole world in God's law. If this teaching was of interest to you, you may also find the similar teaching, the Book of the Covenant versus the Book of the Law, to be worth your review. We hope that you enjoyed this teaching. Remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.